global or die? It's a question I'm wondering myself right now about, is when to go international? Can we still make local startups and succeed? Here is an attempt to go through what I think I learned. Remember the early 90s? Most internet companies were very local. We had search engines all over in all the countries. We had eBay-like sites everywhere. They, most of them have disappeared just because the global companies have more means and they make more sense and they are international very, very fast now. So how should you go international? I think you should think global as you create the business. And it's difficult because, of course, you have lunch with local people, you're in touch with people who are the same as you in the same area. So I, I did most of my business in Paris and you tend to do French business. So it's difficult, but you have to try. Moving to an international city is, of course, a very, very good choice. London, Paris in a way, but most of, uh, most of the times the best is probably New York or, of course, Silicon Valley and San Francisco. Just because here, of course, there are many international people who live here, who come here regularly, and that's just the best environment. Do something original, new and different. Think about Dig or Twitter. Everybody, everybody think of them as originals. Do not do a copycat. You know, a copycat is exactly the same site in a local language, in a local country, unless you just want to, you know, like get acquired fast. Get world-class partners. You may get a better deal from venture capitalists who are local than world-class. What I mean by world-class is people who have international presence, international mindset. You'd rather go with a deal which is not as good, but with international people that can really help you. Oh, and if you're not in Silicon Valley, that may be more difficult, even though, of course, there are great international funds. Hire people from other nationalities than you or your company as much as possible. And this is difficult. Germans tend to hire Germans. French tend to hire French people and Spanish and so on. So the best is really to force yourself not to hire American people if you're American and gather as many countries as possible since the very beginning of the company. Sounds obvious. Register your domain names as fast as possible in the key uh, countries and in the key languages. It's very difficult because uh, domain names are so tough these days to get. Register your brand worldwide as well. It's so easy to copy a brand if you launched it, just register it. Make sure, you know, it can't be uh, copied or used easily in another country. Think about language translation day one of the site. Separate languages as text files or in a database so that it can easily be translated. This is obvious, but many people forget. Gather an international community of members. Do not focus only on your market in terms of membership, in terms of usage. In Seismic, we already have like more than 20 countries using it. Even if it's a little bit, we learn so much from Japanese users, for example. Talk to the most active members of the community in those countries. They could be great evangelists. They could introduce you to local partners. They can help you a lot. Create an application which helps your community members to help you translate or even translate the whole thing in languages you had not planned. Facebook has done an amazing job in having this application where people can do inline translation of the application and then vote for the language's uh, words if there is an argument. It will help you in having like, you know, a version in, in Greek, why not? We have somebody who wants a Greek version right now. Even though if the market is small, if they help you do it, they will be happy of having local. Don't think the languages are all the same in different countries. Like French in Canada, in Quebec, is very different than French in France. Spanish in Mexico is very different than Spanish in Madrid. Some words may mean totally different things, so be careful with that. Do not think Europe is the UK. Many US companies start in the UK saying we're launching Europe. The cultures are very, very different. So if you're in the UK and you succeed there, it doesn't mean you're going to succeed in Spain or in Finland. And let me take the example of blogging. Blogging started very well in the Latin countries, in the Netherlands, in the UK, but never kind of worked in Germany or in Northern Europe, where people are more used to do like eBay or wikis or Wikipedia, but not really blogs. Careful with costs. International is very expensive. And in some countries where you could choose to put your company, you know, if things go wrong, firing people could take you as much as one year of payroll in terms of costs. So be, be careful with local laws, local social um, uh, requirements. 
uh, local work laws, very difficult and very different. Like any European country is different in that, even though we have the European Union. Never do a 50-50 deal with anyone. You know, you have to preferably, of course, have a majority, but like don't do a 50-50 because, you know, it's very difficult to, to agree then if you disagree when everybody is equal. So try to get a majority, of course, on your business. And if not, be careful about the like 40, 40 and 20% for the local manager uh, equity deal. Because in this case, if a local manager that may have been found by your partner votes against you while you're a minority. I tried that. Do keep partnerships with huge local players. LinkedIn has just done this uh, in France in a very, very nice way with APEC, which is the largest human resource uh, site and actor with more than a thousand employees and they will help them of course being launched in France much faster than if it was only LinkedIn by itself. Never trust that if you partner with a huge organization like an internet service provider or one of the top portals that it will work because they may put your service in the last page very very far away in the site and you will never exist so you'd rather work with a smaller partner that is extremely motivated in launching your service rather than you know the national telecom provider that will never give a shit create an international reseller program or partner program many companies like in web hosting for example have used this technique to share as much as possible of the margins, of the profits with local partners so that they behave as entrepreneurs. Kill your local copycats. If you've been successful, you will have copies. Usually you have more means and more traction, so just go there and kill them. Well, if you can't kill them, just buy them. In some markets, and specifically the large ones, it's, it's easy for them to, to get to a certain size. Usually they are easy to uh, buy, just because they created the company entirely just to sell it to, to the leader. Be very pragmatical, of course. In some markets, it could be a self-financed, 100% owned subsidiary of your business. In some markets, it could be a joint venture. In others, it could be a deal where you have minority. And in some other markets, you could just go with a partner and not even have a, an equity structure there because either it's too small or you don't know it. Do not apply any of these to Asia at least because I don't know it enough. But if you look at uh, China, for example, there are so many companies that failed there, even the leaders and pulled back, or entire internet areas being dominated by um, non-US companies and local companies. And do not apply this to any non-internet business because it doesn't work. I'm not even sure you should apply it to an internet business. I was just, you know, giving my two cents. Good luck. <laughs>